This is the Sea of Marmara. This inland sea, which is located between Asia and continental Europe, is connected to the Black Sea via the Bosphorus Strait on the north and to the Aegean Sea via the Dardanelle Strait on the south. Did you know that beneath this sea, which attracts great attention with its wealth of natural beauty under and above it, there are faults that have been the source of many strong earthquakes. It is estimated that the damage to the Marmara region, which accommodates 33% of Turkey's population, 60% of the developed industry, and 34% of small-scale enterprises would be huge in the case of a large-scale earthquake occurring. Attention has been on Marmara since the 1999 Kojaili earthquake. For many years, multidisciplinary studies have continued in this strong, earthquake-prone region. There are many active faults in Turkey which have the potential to generate earthquakes. Amongst these, the North Anatolian fault line begins from Kalioba Bingod in the eastern Anatolia, passes through the Sea of Marmara on the west, and stretches to Greece. The total length is roughly 1,500 kilometers. This line constitutes the northern border of the Anatolian plate, which moves to the southwest by around 2.5 centimeters every year. In the past, large-scale earthquakes occurred along this fault line due to this movement. In 1912, a large-scale earthquake occurred in Sharkoy, which is located in the west part of the Sea of Marmara. The series of earthquakes started with the Erzjan earthquake in 1939 and it continued in intervals westward. Following the 7.4 earthquake that occurred in the Kojaili area in 1999, another 7.2 earthquake occurred around the Duzja area. The two earthquakes occurred within three months of each other. No other large-scale earthquakes from the faults in the Sea of Marmara had been experienced in the prior 100 years. It is highly probable that a large-scale earthquake would be experienced in this region, having not had one in an unusually long time. In 2013, a joint research project was started between Turkey and Japan with the aim of mitigating damages that might be caused by a possible earthquake or tsunami in the Marmara region, and to update disaster education programs in Turkey. Many scientists from both countries worked on different related themes. The Marmara bölgesi deprem riski bakımından çok önemli bir bölge. Kocaeli depreminden sonra stresin batıya doğru yıldığını ve Marmara'da bir büyük deprem beklediğimizde bütün bilim adamları bu konuda hem fikir. アルマラ海には、えっと、北アナトリア断層と非常に大きい断層があって、特にイスタンブールの沖合で地震がまだ起こってないというエリアがあります。えっと、そこでの断層の振る舞いはどうなのか、え、そういうことを知るためには、え、
By this means, it's possible to record small earthquakes which cannot be felt by humans. These seismometers recorded data for four years. Once a seismometer reaches the sea floor, it starts recording earthquake data. The seismometers are detected by the vessel and brought to the surface once a year. They are serviced and placed back on the sea floor after data transfer. They then continue to record data for the following year. Approximately 15,000 earthquakes with less than magnitude 5.4 occurred in the Marmara region between 2013 and 2017. These earthquakes distinctly show the northern and southern arms of the North Anatolian Fault. Intense earthquake activity in the section of the northern arm inside the Sea of Marmara was also recorded. For the purpose of estimating the fault structure and movement, electromagnetic measurements were taken on the sea floor and on land. Movement of the fault was measured by recording the shifting distance between certain points on both sides of the fault. Based on the data analysis, a seismic source model was created. The circles you see here in different colors represent the location of earthquakes. The depths and number of earthquakes are observed to decrease when moving from west to east. For four years, it was observed that no earthquake had occurred at a depth less than 8 kilometers from the surface on the west side of Marmara. Furthermore, seismic activity has also been detected at depths more than 22 kilometers below the surface. There are almost no earthquakes in the rectangles marked respectively. These areas are the sections which may generate strong tremors during future earthquakes. This animation shows the tsunami generated by a landslide on the sea floor during an earthquake. This same type of tsunami occurred in the Sea of Marmara during the 1999 Kojaili earthquake as well. The project research group made numerical models of tsunamis in the Sea of Marmara which can arise from earthquakes or sea floor landslides and a tsunami database was made. The red areas shown on the map are landslide prone areas. These areas are predicted to be the sources of tsunamis. A tsunami, which might occur under such circumstances, has the power to have an impact on coastal areas. Let's see the tsunami simulations from Haidaparsha port. A possible tsunami could affect the functions of a port of even this size. Using this type of simulation, special measures can be planned to mitigate the damages of such a disaster. The researchers used sets of seismometers for the purpose of identifying the structure of layers below urban areas. A group of high sensitivity seismometers, which you see here, have been placed in triangular shape and data analyses were performed. These measurements were made in more than 150 points around the Sea of Marmara, more intensively in the Tequila and Zeytinburnu areas. Again, ground models were generated within the scope of the project in order to make full-scale models of earthquake motion in urban areas. These models were processed with Marmara earthquakes as the source model, and building stock and an integrated earthquake simulation was made. One of the areas selected for this study was Zeytinburnu, Istanbul. The calculations were made on how the underground structure in Zeytinburnu would amplify earthquake waves, and how each building would react based on actual building data. Here, the red color shows the maximum displacement for each building. It's possible to simulate the behavior of buildings, fuel tanks, as well as industrial facilities during earthquakes. For example, we can see the behavior of an oil tank with an approximate diameter of 23 meters in the case of an earthquake. The movement is of a scale that could cause an oil overflow in a fuel tank and result in a fire. Similar simulations as these were made in a few more areas within the scope of the project. 
If this type of a research could be undertaken in multiple areas, realistic damage predictions could be made for future earthquakes, and a strategy could be developed as to the type of advanced measures to be taken. After the 1999 Kojaili earthquake, many programs were initiated in Turkey to raise awareness of earthquake risk and to reduce those risks. Educational programs were prepared. Disaster education was added into the curriculum of schools. Official programs on disaster risk management were initiated in universities. Under the leadership of the Disaster and Emergency Management Presidency, which was established in 2009, a countrywide disaster strategy was developed. The results of the scientific research obtained by the project are supplemental to the existing educational materials. An informative booklet on tsunamis and a disaster education video were also produced. This video demonstrates the visit of a Turkish researcher to the Tohoku earthquake area in 2011. Furthermore, the video educates about tsunami dangers in Turkey and correct response in the case of a tsunami warning. This video has been used by Kandil Observatory and the Earthquake Research Institute, Disaster Preparedness Training Unit in the training sessions offered to all visitors, primarily school children. A cartoon and comic book on earthquakes and tsunami were prepared by the project. Deprem sırasında. Sallanıyor muyuz? Deprem. Masanın altına saklan. Oh, hayır. Avize veya Scientific results of the project were also shared with people via seminars held in Yalova, Terkida, Çanakkale, Istanbul, and Bandurma. Additionally, information sharing seminars were organized for AFAD, representatives of the provinces in the Marmara region, and the results of the research were shared. Undoubtedly, it is of great importance to establish a sustainable and effective tie between mass media and researchers. Disaster preparedness is not a phenomenon to be remembered and applied only in the occurrence of earthquakes. It is substantial to bring up this topic frequently from the perspective of increasing awareness. This is why the seminars, such as the Media Science Café, were organized where the scientists and the members of the mass media had face-to-face -face dialogue regarding the relevant topics of the earthquake and tsunami research results. With this video, we try to summarize the general results of the five-year project research. Within this time frame, the Japanese and Turkish scientists have endeavored together to make progress on earthquake research. Ee, dünyadaki bilim insanlarının sismik boşluk olarak nitelendirdiği Marmara e, Denizi'nde ki bu deniz büyük bir deprem potansiyeline sahip 2013 yılında başlamış olduğumuz ve Türk tarafının liderliğine en sümüzün yapmış olduğu Türk-Japon projesi sayesinde özellikle Marmara Denizi'nin e, deprem fiziğini anlama konusunda önemli aşamalar kat ettik. Yine benzer şekilde deniz tabanı sismolojisi ve e, jeodesi alanında enstrümümüzün sahip olduğu e, potansiyeli arttırma şansı edindik. E, i̇lave olarak deprem zararlarının azaltılması ve afet bilincinin yaygınlaştırılması konusunda da önemli adımlar attığımıza inanıyorum. さらにこれを継続してその、より、その皆さんに地震や津波ということを理解してもらう。さらには防災教育を推進することによって、いざ丸々解で地震や津波が起こったときに被害を軽減する。ま、そのための研究をこれからも日本とトルコの連携のもと
how about you?